Hi everyone, Cinder 9 welcome back to Let's Play Plants vs. Zombies. Sunflower Pea Shooter Walnut Snow Pea Potato Mine, and I'll show off the new repeater. Raise that plant as we start stage uh, or level, so you should say, uh, 1 9. The repeater's biggest downfall is its, well, cost. <laughs> that it costs 200 sun. It's very expensive. Having a lot of sunflowers can help counteract this. So it's good to use a, a, a plant like the potato mine, maybe a walnut to stall so you can get some more sunflowers going. just due to the cost of the repeater. And of course we still have to wait for the... One more. Let's show off the new repeater. And you see it fires two peas at a time giving it twice the firepower of just a regular pea shooter. That's it. But it's really awesome because, hey, that's twice the firepower of a regular pea shooter. In just one spot. So with that, you could have more, more plants. Now cone zombies won't be a problem for uh, cone zombies aren't a problem for a repeater, as you'll see. Whereas another plant would have problems uh, getting there. Just go ahead and jump over that for me, so you can slow down. Oh, not fast enough. Oh well. The repeater should still be able to take him out. The repeater's a, a very strong plant. Yep, there you go. Again, the only downside is, well, the cost. But once you get the sun going with all your sunflowers, you'll be able to afford it. And that's about it. Then build your defenses as you would normally. Bye. <laughs> the huge wave of zombies is approaching. So something I didn't go over last time that I think can really help you out is... You see, I, uh, you saw that I put the snow pea here first. Well, that's because it didn't have a walnut protecting it. You want to help aid your weakest lanes, quote-unquote. Like, this is a lane, this is a lane, this is a lane. You know, each row, you could say. Whichever one is the worst off, if there's zombies heading there, you want to help it first. So because we had this guy attacking with his uh, bucket, which we know takes a lot of damage, we wanted to help it first. So I put the repeater here. Just kind of take that mentality. It'll really help you in the future. And that's about all I can say for <laughs> for this one. Once you have your your defenses set, it's uh, 
pretty it's very much in your favor especially if you took your new repeater just due to how strong it is and it's not something I'm doing now and this is just a habit for her because of uh, future levels but I'm not putting anything all the way up here feel free to do that feel free to put put your one that's all the way in in front just know they're gonna get chewed on more the reason I kind of put them back a little bit is that way the pea shooters your your attacking plants have a chance to beat the zombie before they even chew on the walnut another thing you could do if the zombies aren't making it that far you could put the potato mine in front of the walnut once you have everything set up and things like now is a good time to do it when you're waiting for that huge wave to come and then the potato mine can get anything that would make it to the walnut. So you see, there's a lot of different strategies with your plants. That's the great thing about Plants vs. Zombies, and one reason to buy the game no matter what. Because you can play completely different than I can. Try out different plants, do different different things I'm just showing some general strategies and some different ways you can use the plants thanks potato mine <laughs> what's this a note hello we are about to launch an all-out attack on your house sincerely the zombies huh well that's really bad but also kind of courteous that they let us know they were going to do that. Hmm. Still, we can't have that. That's a lot of zombies. Welcome to level 1-10, which is the end of level 1. The end of the levels always work this way. It's really cool. You get different plants that will show up this is kind of like the bowling except it's uh different plants plus this music is awesome so you just have to see what you get the way this is why using different plants is a good idea hello that way you have a an idea of how they work Us, the music is just awesome. Like I said. Don't know where I want to put you yet. I definitely want a snow pea on each row. So we'll end up doing that. Use everything you've learned in the first few levels. Or the first ten levels. To help yourself out. That snow pea. We could put a chomper here, sure. Another repeater. Another snow pea, good! They give you more than enough plants to really build an effective defense. Let's put a chomper here. The same rule applies as in the bowling. Don't let too many show up. Ooh, potato mine. That's interesting. Got that last repeater. Put you here. All right, another repeater. Let's help this side out. The huge wave is about to show up, so I'll just go ahead and put the mines. Another repeater. Awesome. If you start to have too many plants, it's like, wow, this is going really well. What you could do then is start to replace plants. Like so. 
or just start to add additional plants. Another walnut. And the reason they give you so many plants is that if you're really not good at the game, it's okay. The game will help you. And especially if this is your first time playing. That's the great thing about Plants vs. Zombies. It's really for all skill levels. that yes attempt to get through the wall of walnuts <laughs> another snow pea and you can see that these walnuts are getting chewed on a lot this is what I was talking about Yeah, they're eating the potato mines before they can sprout the deal, but that's okay. And as soon as one dies, we can put a, uh, a cherry bomb. So you see, they're starting to throw a lot of zombies. That's okay. Another repeater. You still have a lot of tools at your disposal. Final wave. This is the boss, you could say, of the very of the uh, first world, quote unquote. Final wave. This is when these Explodinator achievement, which I think has killed 10 zombies with one cherry bomb. There you go. Done. Just build your defenses. Like I said, take what you've learned at the beginning through the worlds, what to do with your walnuts and things like that, and just have at it. And that completes the first world, you could say. What's this? Looks like a mushroom. This is a puff shroom. Shoot short range spores at the enemy. Because, since we're now entering the second world, things are going to be quite different. Evening, Sindral. Those zombies just won't let up, will they? You'll notice that fighting zombies at night is different than in the day. For one, you won't get any sun falling from the sky, which makes sense. There's no sunlight. You know, there's the sun's not out. You can still get sun from sunflowers, though. And lucky for you, you got yourself some puff shrooms. Plant as many of those as you can, and you'll be A-O good. Yeah, not A-O-K, -okay, A-O good. And Crazy Dave is right about that. Hello, you're different. This is a newspaper zombie. Like Crazy Dave said, fighting in the daytime is way different than fighting at what we are now, the nighttime. World 2 will be all during night. Uh, you'll need sunflowers, and you'll be surprised how that additional sun from the sky will really slow you down at the beginning. Uh, you will definitely want to take puff shrooms. They are... They, they don't uh, take anything to buy. <laughs> they're free. Uh, they're very handy. When it says short range, though, it does mean short range. The range is three squares, I believe. We'll take a walnut. Um... Let's see. Really don't need the chomper. There's not too many uh, 
bigger zombies. Uh, the way the newspaper zombie is going to work is the newspaper just gives him additional health. It's kind of like a cone. You have to go through the newspaper before you get to him. What's special about him, though, is once you get through the newspaper, he actually gets faster. He's, like, angry that you got rid of the newspaper. So be careful of that. We'll take the pea shooter, snow pea, and potato mine. Uh, we're going to leave the expensive stuff behind. I know the snow pea's expensive, but it's the most expensive thing. For this first nighttime stage. These are also new. Expired. Let's get started. You will just want to throw out puff shrooms as quickly and as many as possible. They're good to throw up front because of the short range. As you can see, the sun is slow because you have to wait for the sunflower. The other thing about puff shrooms is they don't do a lot of damage. They really need each other's help to get anywhere. There we go. So you can see, we don't have nearly as many sunflowers as we do at the beginning of our other stages that we've done so far. But plant enough puff shrooms and you'll be okay. As you can see, you'll need two puff shrooms to deal with the zombie. They're just not strong enough on their own with their small range. It's not like a pea shooter which can shoot the entire row. You know, across the entire row. So they'll need help. Potato mines still work really well. You can still use potato mines to help stall while you uh, get more puff shrooms out. It's just as crazy Dave said. Put out a lot of puff shrooms and you'll be okay. You're really not going to have the the sun power for a lot of stuff. As you can see, we're getting close to the end of the stage already. This is money. You want to grab the money. Save up money to purchase cool stuff. That's actually really true. Yeah, this grave was put in a bad spot. Now watch. See, the zombie gets really angry. And just goes on a rampage. Oops. Wrong thing. Oops, room. Money. So now, other than sun, you also have to look for, for cash. <laughs> And it is used to buy cool stuff. You see, we got one Snoopy out there. We just got what I would have usual for sunflowers. So the nighttime stages are different that way. Any plants you can get, however, will be very useful. Also, this happens on the final wave. Zombies will appear. From the graves. Making things much more difficult. If you've planted enough puff shrooms, though, you should be able to stem the tide. You can also use walnuts to help you. Like so just in case you can also put the walnuts early and put your puff shrooms right behind them hello you're different also let me go over that real quick for every lawnmower you save you get 50 cash nice right and we get a new plant this is the sun shroom at first it'll give just small sun but then it will give normal sun later. The great thing about the sun shroom is that it only costs 25. This is why it's better to use the sun shroom at night instead of the sunflower. Because you can put two of them out with your starting sun. And then they're easier to put more of them out. I like the sun shroom. 
Hey, Crazy Dave. Hey, you've collected $270 in coins so far. When you collect $750, I'll sell you something really neato. There's no way I have a voice for Crazy Dave, just so you know. Now things get a bit more tricky. Conehead zombies and bughead zombies are going to enter the mix. This is problematic because you won't be able to get your bigger plants easily. So you're going to have to be uh, creative with your new sun shroom. Uh, the small sun, I believe, gives you 15. About halfway through the stage, somewhere around there, the sun shroom, if you plant it at the beginning, will be will grow and will give normal sun, which will give you the full 25. Definitely want the puff shroom. Um, Chomper, Snow Pea, and Repeater. Let's live dangerously. <laughs> and the Graves. And you can get the Puff Shrooms out really fast. So now you can see we can get two Sun Shrooms. And then once this one produces sun, we can plant another sun shroom. So we'll be able to get sun not as much, but still faster than what we were. Which is the key. Where are you coming from? There. Come on, somebody else. There we go. Yeesh. Having those two graves there. You have to work around the graves. Which really does make this stage harder than the sun stages. It is a step up. We'll do that. Sunshroom. There we go. Now that puff shroom can help out. And I know, it doesn't look like a lot of sun right now, but it will be. Hmm. Yeah, the Conehead zombies, as you see, will be a big problem. For our uh, little puff shrooms. There we go. Okay, it's not halfway through the stage. It's way sooner than that. My mistake. Now they've now they've grown. They will start giving the full amount of sun. So that's like we had sunflowers. Very useful. After you have the sun shrooms and after we get some more uh, some more firepower, what you're going to see happen is the puff shrooms are kind of like extended potato mines at the beginning. You're going to use them to stall until you have the sun for bigger stuff. A huge wave of zombies is approaching, which means this will... It's every time a huge wave shows up, uh, zombies will show up. I thought so. Never mind. I'm wrong from time to time. <laughs> and we'll get these snow peas out out here snow peas are great to take even though they are expensive because it's all about stalling for time hey, money. for your for your puff shrooms even though this is out of range Because that, that really helps you. In a pinch, you can throw additional puff shrooms out, just like I did there. To stall for even more time. Because they'll have to take a few bites of the puff shroom before they move even further on. Ooh. 
this needs a repeater. <laughs> And there's a gold coin, which is a 50. Just like you get from each of the lawnmowers if they don't get used up at the end of the stage. Put you here. There we go. The places with graves are kind of the most dangerous, especially when the final wave comes and more zombies pop up. So you learn to work around them. See, I'm not even going to put anything there. And the workaround is just, we're going to push everything back. So we'll have the walnut here, instead of, I typically have it here. Have a chopper behind it, and then we'll put some other, uh, other attacking plants. And there you go. That's how you'll get through the night stages at the beginning. And it's kind of a good strategy across the board. You'll want to use your puff shrooms to help you at the beginning because they're free. That way you can buy a bunch of sun shrooms to help you buy the bigger stuff you want to take like repeaters, snow peas, chompers, whatever it is you want to use. So you can have them later to help you beat back the the final wave and the waves with more zombies. I really hope that made that made sense. I'm trying to explain it the best I can. Which is admittedly a little difficult to do when I'm trying to click on everything and make sure I'm grabbing it all. <laughs> But there you go. You just have to be a bit more adaptable. Again, Sunshrooms will be a very good plant for, for you, and you definitely want to use them. You see, with them, I got a full set of Snow Peas and Repeaters, which we had no chance of doing in the first, sta in the, uh, first stage. Hello, it's another mushroom. Because it's nighttime, that's gonna be the the deal. <laughs> Foom shroom shoots fumes or fume shroom, I should say, shoots fumes that can pass through screen doors. And you may be wondering, screen doors? What do you mean shoots through screen doors? Oh, shoots through screen doors. <laughs> This is a screen door zombie. The screen door gives a lot of defense. So what happens is the screen door zombie has, it's quite a bit. It's, I think, stronger than a cone. I don't remember exactly, but it is really strong. And it'll protect it from uh, peas, from like the repeater. It'll also protect it from the puff shroom. It'll protect it from projectiles, with the exception of the uh, fume shroom. The fume shroom's biggest weakness is its range. I think it only has a range of four spaces, somewhere around there, and it doesn't do a lot of damage. What it is good at, however, is that it could shoot. It'll shoot all zombies in that, in those four spaces. Because it's just a, it's just fumes. It's not a projectile that hits and stops. They're handy. You want to put them probably right behind walnuts, or if you're using the chomper combo, walnut, then the chomper behind it, and then right behind the chomper, the fume shroom. It doesn't do a lot of damage though. So even though it's gonna get through the screen door. It'll still take several blasts for it to kill the zombie. But that's the special thing about it. It'll hit all the zombies in the line, and it'll go through the screen door and hit the zombie directly. Without the screen door, it's just a regular zombie, so it won't take long to kill. 
Well, you'll get to see it in action next time. As I end this episode here, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you had a lot of fun. Until the next episode, I'm Cinderay9. Remember to shoot for the stars and take care, everyone.